Jaguar is one of those manufacturers that has stood the test of time, going way back to the mid-1930s. They're also a brand that has a proud and long lineage in the automotive world, whether it's racing or producing great sports cars and grand tours. Late last decade, Jaguar decided to go in the crossover direction with the E and F pace. And people were wondering, did Jaguar make the right choice? But we have seen some other rivals do the exact same, such as Porsche with the Macan and the Cayenne, and also recently the Maserati Gracale and Levante. But I want to take a deep dive into the F pace, see what this vehicle is all about. Is it dynamic and sporty? Is it a crossover that's upscale and very premium quality to match its price point? But also, is it a vehicle at around sixty dollars to $70,000 that's giving you everything you could possibly want in a luxury crossover? Now, before we get in this video, I want to give a huge shout and thank you to Jaguar Land Rover of Peabody in Peabody, Massachusetts for allowing me to this review. The link will be in the description below so you can check out their extensive Jaguar and Land Rover inventory. Also, before we get started, make sure to hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell so you're notified every time a new video goes live on the channel. And so, without wasting any further time, let's get right in this review. Deciding to join the crossover market has been lucrative for many non-mainstream manufacturers who for the longest time didn't want to tarnish their legacies. Some brands made the switch, but at the expense of selling their souls to produce mundane crossovers that lacked inspiration and driving characteristics that enthusiasts could enjoy. The Jaguar F-Pace quickly incorporated attributes from the luxury sedans in the lineup, while also appealing to power-hungry drivers, giving them a wide range of powertrains, including a V8 with the SVR. On the complete opposite side of the spectrum, you have the P250, a model that looks fun and engaging. But for those not looking to spend close to hundred grand, is it the perfect fit for those looking for a well-balanced daily driver? Starting off with pricing, the Jaguar F-Pace P250S comes in at a base cost of $56,000, placed just below the P400 within the lineup. Unlike larger competitors, the F-Pace is the flagship crossover for the brand as there is no 3 alternative planned for the foreseeable future. And as a result, it's likely going to be the vehicle of choice compared to the smaller E-Pace. Despite being mostly credited for its performance-oriented reputation, the F-Pace is surprisingly practical and spacious, and in fact is slightly longer and wider compared to German competitors, offsetting the lower roofline and F-Type inspired rear fascia to retain an adequate amount of cargo capacity and interior space for second row passengers. The full paint finish around the wheel arches is enough to conclude that this crossover is specifically designed for on-road driving. But with the ground clearance of 8.4 inches, you should have no problem taking on unplowed streets during the winter. In many regards, the F-Pace often gets overlooked as Jaguar is a niche brand specialized for a very specific type of buyer. But also, this crossover hasn't seen a major overhaul since its arrival to showrooms late last decade. Yet, there has been a minor cosmetic facelift in recent years, adding very subtle changes to the road presence. The beauty of the F-Pace's design is that it incorporates the front fascia from the XF, appearing more like a lifted car rather than a rugged SUV as the striking body lines brings a dynamic yet sophisticated style to this vehicle. While maybe controversial, we prefer the brushed aluminum accents for the grille on this model, rather than opting for the gloss black exterior pack, as gloss black trim is still present along the side profile and around the fog lights. Completing the classy look for the F-Pace, standard LED headlights will provide more than enough lighting when traveling at night but also the L-shaped daytime running lights does draw your attention when taking a first glance at this crossover. Moving over to the side profile, our model is sitting on 21 inch, five split spoke satin dark gray wheels, which fits the design of the F-Pace more so than the 19s. However, if ride quality and having a softer suspension is a top priority, go with the smaller tires. Yet, 
we found the 21s to be perfectly fine as road noise was kept to a minimum and how this crossover managed the imperfections in the road was similar to what we've experienced from rivals. You'll have body color folding side mirrors with turn signal indicators to go along with blind spot detection for added safety. Then coming around to the back, taking inspiration from the F-Type and XF, the thin LED taillights that wrap around the final third of this crossover is likely one of the first things you'll notice for the F-Pace, along with its sportier and coupe-like roofline. Tucked beneath the bumper will be the dual exhaust outlets, keeping the rear fascia looking clean. But also, as previously mentioned, gloss black accents tie the appearance of the F-Pace together as the color contrast complements the gray exterior very well. Under the hood, the P250 is powered by a 2-liter turbocharged 4-cylinder engine, producing 246 horsepower and 269 pound-feet of torque, and is paired with an 8-speed automatic transmission. While Jaguar is mostly associated with being a performance-focused brand, with this powertrain, the F-Pace's on-road composure is similar to many rivals in this market, where the driving dynamics are tuned for a quieter and more relaxed experience, rather than putting you on the edge of your seat. However, when accelerating and entering highways, the F-Pace has no problem putting the power down, especially in the range between 20 and 60 miles per hour. Also, the 8-speed automatic transitions through the gear smoothly, complementing this model's luxury-first approach. For the drivetrain, all-wheel drive does come standard for all trims, whether it's the P250, P400, or SVR, to provide year-round versatility. And for fuel economy, you're looking at right around 22 miles per gallon in the city and 27 miles per gallon on the highway. Stepping inside, you're good by a classy and certainly British-designed interior, as the light oyster perforated leather seats contrasts nicely with the ebony dashboard and subtle wood grain trim. For both the driver and passenger on this model, they'll have 16-way power adjustable, heated, ventilated, and memory seats that offer plenty of support and cushioning. And you'll have the ability to upgrade to Windsor leather for a more opulent experience. In front of you, between the analog gauges, there will be a digital display that showcases basic information. And while not equipped on this P250, opting for the head-up display might be worth the additional $1,000 if you prefer keeping your eyes on the road rather than looking down at the gauge cluster or at the infotainment system. And speaking of the head unit, you'll have an 11-inch touchscreen with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto compatibility to go along with onboard navigation and the Meridian sound system. Functioning much like a tablet, there isn't much of a learning curve when navigating your way through the different menus, as it's clean laid out and quick to respond. Better yet, and still great to see in 2023, is the physical dials for the dual zone climate control, rather than having to waste time and taking your eyes off the road to adjust the temperature from the touchscreen. The infotainment system will also be home to the settings that customize your drive modes, if configurable and active dynamics have been equipped on your P250. And for those who anticipate many thrilling road trips, there is a stopwatch to measure lap times and also a G-meter. Ambient lighting is also optional, helping to set the mood and bring a subtle sense of luxury to the cabin. Finally, you will have a rear backup camera with trajectory to go along with front and rear parking sensors. The rest of the interior is minimalistic in design, with a wireless phone charging pad conveniently placed beneath the touchscreen. And for the center console, to the right of the gear shifter will be the drive mode selector, where you can quickly change between eco, comfort, dynamic, and adaptive surface response, which helps deliver the right amount of torque for when you encounter different types of road surfaces. For the center storage compartment, you'll have plenty of room for smaller items like a wallet and smartphone. And rounding out the front seating area, above will be a panoramic moonroof, which will let in a lot of natural light to the interior. 
Now moving on to the second row, we're going to start off on the passenger side. And this seat has been adjusted a bit further back. It's not on a recline, but I have plenty of legroom here. And when you take a look at what the Jaguar F-Pace is providing on paper when it comes to interior spacing, it is on par with a lot of its rivals, which is a bit of a surprise because with the F-Pace, you have a lower roof line or it has that sportier roof line with the sporty rear fascia. But also you would think that the interior wouldn't be that spacious from the outside as the F-Pace does have more of an athletic design to it and yet here I am at around 5'5 five five, so I'm not the tallest person out there but I'm pretty comfortable back here there's a lot of legroom a lot of headroom I do think that for taller passengers they should be able to sit back here pretty comfortably and not need to worry about hitting their head on the headliner even with the massive panoramic moonroof also when it comes to shoulder room plenty of it the f-pace is rather wide a bit wider than some compact crossovers in this price range and market so you don't even really need to worry about this vehicle not being family friendly or conducive for you and your family now moving on to the center seat there are some good placements for your feet there is a very aggressive center hump which is similar to what we see for Grand Tours. And when I look at the F-Pace from the outside, but also when you're on the road driving it around, it does have a Grand Tour-like feel when it comes to the handling, when it comes to the suspension, and just the ride quality overall. And the fact that we do have this aggressive center hump, though, is very similar in the characteristic that we see from the sports cars in the lineup. Now, because this vehicle is somewhat wide, I think you can fit a third person back here. I think you can, you can have three average size adults sit back here pretty comfortably and they won't feel claustrophobic at all. Then on the driver's side, the seat is adjusted to someone of my height around 5'5 and I have a lot of legroom here where I can just sit back, relax, and enjoy the driving experience. Now, since this is a two-row crossover, these seats don't recline, which isn't too much of a surprise, but still these seats do provide a lot of support and cushioning where I think on a longer drive you won't be tired after that long two to three hour road trip with the family. Also back here you do have two rear air vents. Now our model does not have heated outboard seats. You do have a 12 volt outlet and rounding out the second row seating area you do get a center armrest with two cup holders. Now coming around to the back you're going to receive a power lift gate. And inside, behind the second row seats, you're looking at right around 31 and a half cubic feet of room, making the F-Pace one of the more practical crossovers in this market and price range. This is far better than the Alfa Romeo Stelvio, Mercedes-Benz GLC, Porsche Macan, and also the new Maserati Grecale. You're gonna have plenty of room to fit all your luggage if you are going on a road trip with the family. Also, I'll be able to fit all my camera gear today. So it's two bags of camera gear, a gimbal box, and a tripod, no problem at all. And probably could have gone grocery shopping after this review as well. Due to the size of this cargo area, it's nice and wide. Also, of course, even though this is a crossover, it's very easy to load your gear back here as well. Then with the second row seats folded, you're looking at close to 70 cubic feet of room. Once again, putting the F-Pace as being one of the more practical options in this market. So if you are moving stuff around, maybe you're going skiing and snowboarding, you'll be able to fit all your equipment when you are going on that road trip or journey. Then on the left side of the rear cargo area, you will have some netting for some smaller items such as water bottles, car detail equipment, or a first aid kit. But more importantly, beneath the floor mat, you will find a spare tire, which is really great to see in 2023 as a lot of brands have removed this feature entirely from most vehicles. So if you encounter a flat on your road trips or travels, you can fix that and be back on the road. Also a minor feature that I really like is the rear cargo cover, which will keep all your valuable items out of sight. So if you are like me and you have camera gear or anything else of value, you can leave them back here and have that peace of mind knowing that no one will be able to peek in and steal what you have. And then once you're done, just press the button and the lift gate will close automatically. So we're now behind the wheel of the 2023 Jaguar F-Pace 250. Let's see how this vehicle performs, how it handles, how it drives, how it compares to other premium luxury crossovers in this market, and also see if the four-cylinder is providing more than enough at this price point. 
For Jaguar, it's all about the experience and the complete package. If you're somebody that's specifically looking at the Jaguar F-Pace, you want premium luxury, you want refinement, you want quality. And that's exactly what you're going to experience with this crossover. Now you can upgrade to Windsor leather, which I would highly recommend. And there's actually a few packages that I would go with for this particular trim and with this powertrain. Because with the P250, obviously you're not prioritizing performance. You don't need the V6, and obviously you're not looking at the V8 with the SVR. So quality and comfort is certainly something that you're gonna be drawn into. And the Windsor leather is certainly going to heighten that experience. Now, the leather we have today is more than adequate. In fact, these seats are very aggressively bolstered for a vehicle that's not performance oriented. Very supportive. What I also like too is the seating position as well. You sit pretty high up in this vehicle, but one thing that really stands out to me, and this is one of the reasons why I think the F-Pace is kind of like the Alfa Romeo Stelvio and Porsche Macan in a certain way, is that you feel as though you're one with the chassis of this crossover rather than sitting on top of it. And you can definitely tell that the F-Pace is inspired by the F-Type in some way, shape, or form. When it comes to the visibility when you are behind the wheel, you have a nice panoramic view. A-pillars are actually very thin for a vehicle in this market, so you won't have any blind spots when you are approaching an intersection. Then taking a look at your side mirrors, they are decently sized and they're placed in the right spot, so I can see what's behind me. And then looking out back, you are gonna have that sportier rear fascia, so you're gonna have a thinner rear window. Now I can see what's directly behind me, but the headrest might get in the way in certain situations. The ride quality is certainly a standout to me. I have been driving this vehicle around for about 10 minutes, and even with the larger tire size, you barely feel any imperfections on the roadways, but also compared to other crossovers in this market that I've driven, whether it's BMW, Audi, Mercedes-Benz, I think the ride quality is certainly higher and more conducive for somebody who is going on longer road trips than what we've seen from competitors. The suspension is very soft, but I have seen mixed reviews on that where some people say that the suspension is a bit rigid and stiff. Now I think it's probably Jaguar F-Paces with the dynamic handling package, which I would recommend if you are looking for an engaging driving experience behind the wheel. Although I would still go with a package that really prioritizes that interior comfort. And that's just my take for a vehicle at this price point. Also, insulation is top notch. You don't really hear any of the outside world at all. In fact, all I'm hearing is that four cylinder engine. No road noise, no wind noise. This is a very well insulated crossover. It isolates you from the outside world, which I think is what really adds to the appeal for Jaguar in general. Jaguar is giving you an experience at $65,000, much like Porsche is with the Macan and also Maserati with the Gracale. One of the observations that I have here with the F-Pace is that for a crossover that you would think is all luxury, does have dynamic handling characteristics and qualities here, where the steering is certainly responsive but also one little nudge of the wheel and it's already taking the corner, which is something I really wasn't expecting here for this crossover. Because with the P250, you think, all right, turbo four, you do get really high quality materials for the interior, soft ride quality, also a quiet cabin. And that's usually a recipe for a vehicle that isn't going to have a bad side to it. And yet, this is a very pleasant vehicle to drive around. It doesn't hide that it does have some sporty driving characteristics and a sporty personality, which is something that I can really appreciate as an enthusiast, as someone who loves driving. So in dynamic mode, right off the line, not bad, not bad at all. What I notice is that Dynamic mode actually changes up the driving experience, which some vehicles that have a turbo four don't really give you that. It's more like a fake 
sport experience. But what I have noticed is that the powertrain and the engine performs very quickly. Also, the gear shifts are more aggressive. Also, that engine note does get a bit louder. You have really nice paddle shifters that are very high quality, feel very premium in the hands. And again, that's something that you would experience from a Jaguar, just being a brand that's all about luxury, but also that performance as well. So again, even though you're gonna say, well, Mike, you know, we're spending maybe an extra 10 to 15 grand for an F-Pace over some of the competitors, but you are getting a vehicle where the interior quality is one step above everyone else in this segment. Also, really nice leather wrap steering wheel as well with aggressive 10 and two positions, but also supportive nine and three positions. Everything else about the interior is really driver centric and driver focused. I love the infotainment system that is placed well within reach. Also, you still have physical dials for the climb control settings, and it's very minimalistic, but it's minimalistic in a way where it doesn't feel as though this vehicle is giving you a cheaper or unrefined experience. You also have plenty of shoulder room as well with the wide center console, but what I will say this is that the F-Pace does get overlooked in many regards. I think maybe it has something to do with the pricing, but again, you're buying this vehicle for the experience and what it brings to the table overall. But from a practicality standpoint, it's one of the most spacious vehicles in this market and price range. And it's not something you would really think when you look at this vehicle from the outside because it does have that sportier rear fascia. It does have that lower roof line. It's a crossover that's typical for a premium luxury brand that doesn't want to deviate too far away from its performance heritage. And yet what Jaguar has done here is given you a vehicle that also feels very upscale, but still, even in its most basic form, has handling characteristics that is certainly going to inspire a lot of confidence on back roads. I am in dynamic mode. Are at highway speeds. So for a crossover with a zero to 60 time of around 6.9 seconds, this certainly feels on par with a lot of other turbocharged four-cylinder engine powered vehicles in this market. In fact, I think Jaguar is really underrating the performance of this vehicle severely because it doesn't feel slow or lethargic. When you compare the F-Pace to some of its closest rivals that are not mainstream, like that Volvo XC60, like the Genesis GV70 with the Turbo 4, or even the Porsche Macan. The Jaguar F-Pace, in my mind, still has that dynamic feel, more so than the Volvo XC60, but also has the comfort and the luxury that would match what you get with the Porsche Macan. So what Jaguar is banking on here, and what they've always done too for their entirety of their history, is that they're giving you a vehicle where it's unique. It's really more of an individualized experience that you're not going to find from maybe BMW, Audi, or Mercedes-Benz. It's a bit more specific, and it's a bit more special than what we see from other mainstream rivals. Now, at highway speeds, it has nice composure on the roadways, even with a larger tire size. Now, if you are looking for comfort, I would go with the 19s, but with the 21s, I don't think the ride quality is diminished at all. So ultimately, after this test drive, the Jaguar F-Pace threw some curveballs today, which I'm pleasantly surprised and I'm glad to see because with the P250, I had a perception of this vehicle before taking it out on the roadways. I'm thinking, okay, it's gotta feel like a lot of non-performance oriented models in this market and price range. It's probably not gonna feel dynamic. It's probably gonna lean very heavily towards being a luxury vehicle. And yet, it's a crossover that's classy, but has a bad side to it. And that's something that I think a lot of buyers are going to enjoy, that it's not just going to be luxury all the time. It's not just going to be upscale and a vehicle that has more of a laid back demeanor. It's a vehicle that you can have some fun with on the roadways and it's a blast to drive on your weekly commutes. So to wrap up my time with the 2023 Jaguar F-Pace, what are my final thoughts and takeaways for this luxury crossover? Compared to most rivals in this market, the F-Pace has Grand Tour-like tendencies from the exterior 
to the interior and also the driving dynamics. What I really like about this vehicle is that yes, Jaguar is a premium luxury manufacturer, but they also didn't deviate too far away from their heritage with this crossover where the driving dynamics, even with the turbocharged four cylinder engine is very engaging, but also the handling is snappy and very fluid. And it's exactly what you would expect from a vehicle that is really taking a lot of the same characteristics and DNA that we see from the F-Type and other sporty vehicles from the Jaguar brand. But also this vehicle can double as being a great family crossover, but also a comfortable and upscale daily driver. Where the interior quality is certainly memorable. Also, of course, if you go with the Windsor leather seats, you're gonna have an experience that's very similar to what we see from the Porsche Macan and also the new Maserati Gracale. Also, I love the fact that the interior layout is simplistic, but everything is within arm's reach, but still done so in a way where you don't feel as though this vehicle has an interior that reflects a price point of maybe four or fifty thousand dollars this does feel very much like a sixty five thousand dollar crossover also it is very practical with the amount of cargo space you have behind the second row seats but also the interior spacing as well for both up front and that second row but ultimately it boils down to the complete package that the f-pace is providing where it can be fun and engaging when you pop it in dynamic mode and you're going to have the stiffer handling you're going to have a vehicle that can perform quite well even with the turbocharged four-cylinder engine but at the same time you also have the interior comfort where you don't want to leave this vehicle on a longer drive even for myself after doing a 30-minute test drive I want to continue on and that's something I don't normally say for a lot of vehicles in this market but also as Jaguar has moved in the crossover direction what I can really appreciate is that this crossover does feel like a sedan it feels like a sports car and it's great to see that Jaguar didn't deviate too far away from their heritage where the F-Pace is a completely foreign vehicle to somebody who has purchased an XF or an XE or other vehicles that Jaguar has offered for the past 20 or 30 years. And that's one thing I think a lot of buyers have certainly appreciated and enjoyed about the F-Pace. So guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe for more. Also make sure to follow me on Instagram at Boston Auto Blog so you can see what I'm up to and what vehicles I'll be featuring in the future. And I will see you guys next time.